Greetings. Hello again. Uh, my name is Greg, and I will be building this Revit paper clock. This is actually the third clock that I will be trying to build um, this year. The first one downstairs is uh, also a Revit clock. I'm going to be calling that the Revit Medieval Clock from now on because that's kind of its styling and what it's known for. Is it's got this medieval look to it. And it's very cool. It's working wonderfully. It's been running for weeks and weeks without issue. I've made numerous modifications and improvements to it, all unnecessary, but I like it. And I you know, can't keep my hands off the thing. It's so fun to, to play with. Uh, the second one here behind me, that is the James Rudolph Clock Book Clock. And it, it's just it's a miserable, punishing uh, exercise. I don't recommend it unless you've got a lot of experience, tools, and dexterity. Um, the only way I'm ever going to get this one back here to run is if I replace the main gear with a new set of gears that I, I found a, a thing online, t a gear template generator. I'm thinking of possibly printing out some new gears and making them from scratch because the gears that it has you make in there there's no way that you can fold paper to make them as precise as they need to be so I'm thinking of cutting some out of wood but that'll be a project for another day because today my new Revit clock has arrived um, reading through some of its literature it seems like this is actually the first model that they put out and maybe the medieval clock is possibly the second or last I'm not sure um, this one is uh, noticeably different. I'm going to call this one the Peace Tower Clock because this clock is a replica of a clock uh, at the main entrance of Parliament Hill in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. Peace Tower Clock. PT Clock. So this one's really cool. It's got some these neat Roman numerals around the face. It's nice and round and open and airy. You can see inside it easily. But something I've noticed right away after opening this thing is that it involves a lot more folded paper. The components that have come with it are significantly thinner than the medieval clock. There are no thick cardboard sections to give it rigidity. So it's all going to be glue and clamping and folding and making tubes out of the paper. I'm excited to get into it, but I know better than to just dive right in. I'm going to read this entire manual front to back before I cut out anything. A um, little bit of history with me in this particular clock already, and I haven't even started on it. I bought it on eBay for about 50 bucks, and the first one I bought uh, is lost. No idea where it was. It was supposed to be delivered a week ago, and the delivery date came and went, and the tracking went offline, and now nobody knows where it is. I went to USPS, and they were completely unhelpful in every way. They don't know where the package is, where it's going, where it's been. They can't tell you how long it's going to spend in uh, how long it's going to spend in delivery between one destination and another. They can't tell you where it's going, like which distribution centers. They really have no idea. It's as big a surprise to them as it is to me. So I presume, I assume that the clock, the first clock I ordered is sitting next to the Ark of the Covenant, wherever that is. So I bought another one. Here it is. A priceless limited item that is no longer in production and USPS lost it. Great. Just, that's awesome. So I bought this one. I also bought a third one that I could have shipped with FedEx in case they did the same treatment to this one. So I presume that one will arrive this week. And, you know, I'm kind of excited about having more than one of these because if I like it, I can build a second one, keep it at my office at work. Have one here, one at work. Yay! Or I might sell it. If the third one ever arrives, I, or the first one, maybe I'll sell it. So you can follow along with these videos. Build your own paper clock. Look for a link in the description if I ever get around to selling it. All right. Anything else to say about this before we dive right in? Oh, so when I first opened the box, it came with this manual. It came with all the components. It came with uh, an addendum 
with some additional instructions, and it came with this. Let's see if we can get this squared up here. This is a template for the frame. Say, if they've got to print out a template for the frame this big, <laughs> it must be a pretty complicated device. I don't know how much detail you can see, but there's a lot of folding and fitting, and it's going to be a challenge. The first rabbit clock I did, the medieval clock, took about 30 hours. This one on the box says 48. So this is going to keep me busy for a while. Okay, uh, before we call it a video, let's go over some of the tools that I have lined up ready to go. First, I've got my cutting board that I can cut and glue and do all sorts of stuff on. It's just a disposable, cheap plastic cutting board. So I'm going to use that. I've got my number 11 exact knife with a fresh blade in it. I've got a standard pair of scissors. Probably won't use those too much. I've got some extra strength Elmer's glue. Extra strength! I've got my wood glue left over from the first project. A couple brushes to apply the glue. A small bit of water to wash off my brushes. I've got some super glue to strengthen the parts that come into a contact with each other so I can put a nice hard edge on everything. I've got a little multi-tool pair of pliers here. It's a, a small pair of pliers. It's very handy for making hard edges on folded paper and getting stuff in and out in these tiny little axles. Here's a bag of axles and some string that it came with. I think that is just a legitimate toothpick in there. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what else we got. Oh, of course, my bucket of clamps. Lots of little bitty clamps, alligator clips, clothes pins, you name it. There are my big clamps. What else have we got? Got my lubrication stuff. I've got some Gorilla Glue hot glue. Just in case I want to use hot glue on something, I'll probably try to stay away from that though. And oh, ruler. Let me be your ruler. ruler. We crave a different kind of buzz. And what else do we have? Oh, the Dremel. This poor thing. This thing is shot. I need. I'm gonna go pick up another one this afternoon. Because I mean, it turns on and off, but it's a chore to change this head. And I've lost a couple of the important bits. Broke one of them on the last clock. So that would be Rebbit Peace Tower Clock, episode one. Anything else worth mentioning? My gosh, I'm excited. I've been wait looking forward to this for a couple weeks now. Don't use USPS. They're just terrible. If you can't replace it, don't use USPS. Seriously. Like, I know I could go to eBay and protest it, and they'd probably give me my money back, but that's not what I want. And I really don't want to do that to the person who sold it. Just, if you sell stuff on eBay, especially if it's a priceless, irreplaceable item, like a photo or something, don't use USPS. Just don't. Learn POS. <sighs> clocks and clocks and clocks and clocks. I have nothing else to say at the moment. Thanks for tracking with me. That'll be episode one of the Peace Tower Clock.